Hey everyone, welcome to Strange Stories, where we explore near-death experiences and supernatural stories from people who've had a glimpse of the other side. If you enjoy our content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our channel. Without further ado, let's get to the story of the day. I had two NDEs, one at the age of seven and the second at the age of 14. I remember more from the second one since I was able to jot down details and examine my experiences. My first happened in 1978. At the time, an unknown illness had infected a number of young children in my neighborhood, Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Severe dehydration, nausea and vomiting, lethargy, inability to eat or drink, and other symptoms were reported. My brother got a milder case, while I got one of the worst. Several children had to be hospitalized for varied durations of time, ranging from two or three days to weeks. After four days, my brother was able to return home. The most vulnerable were placed in isolation tents, unable to be touched or directly contacted by anyone from the outside world. Seven of them were so dehydrated that they went into comas. One of the seven was me. My breathing and heart stopped for nearly five minutes throughout my coma. Hospital professionals performed CPR on me and were able to resuscitate me. All of this I later learned from my parents and grandmother, who had been present at the time. My second NDE occurred when I was 14, while at camp in a little town in northern Massachusetts. My church had organized this trip, and we were staying in a massive old cabin with a walk-in attic and plenty of sleeping space. I had been bullied every day of school for the previous seven years. I was bullied for another nearly three years until my family moved from Massachusetts to North Carolina in 1987. During that time, I suffered 12 concussions and three skull fractures, among other ailments. Bullying was the root of all of them. A fellow camper began tormenting me in this attic space at the camp one afternoon, which had a sloped roof on both sides and horizontal wooden 12 by 12 beams for support. He pushed me backwards into one of the sloped portions so hard that the back of my head, which had already experienced multiple injuries before this, directly smacked one of the beams. According to the hospital explanation, the blow had directly impacted my brain stem, which governs most basic functions such as breathing and pulse rate. I stumbled downstairs in a stupper. Another youngster tried to pick on me, but when I collapsed on the floor, he stopped. Camp counselors were promptly summoned, and happily, one of them knew CPR. My breathing and heartbeat had both halted. He gave CPR for approximately four minutes till the ambulance arrived and the paramedics took over. They were able to resuscitate me in the ambulance, but I remained unconscious. I arrived at the hospital that way, my heart racing and my breathing shallow. The ER doctor worked on me for about 20 minutes before getting a response from me. I only remember vague sights and thoughts, as well as some clear images from my first NDE. My second NDE, on the other hand, I recall completely, and once there, I realized that what I was experiencing was something I had previously experienced, and that my second NDE shared many similarities with the first. I was conscious that I had left my body, yet when I caught a peak of my ethereal form, I recognized the same physical attributes as before. Later. I discovered that it was related to a concept used in the first Matrix film, residual self-image. I anticipated to see the body I was used to, and I did so in order to feel more at ease. Second, I felt lifted away, despite the fact that I never saw a brilliant light or a tunnel, nor did I see any deceased relatives. I had not lost any relatives in my life up until that moment. My paternal grandfather died in 1989, which was my first familial death. My best friend, who was killed by a drunk driver when I was 15 and she was 14, was the first death I witnessed. Third, I had the sensation of being in some sort of location. It wasn't a room because there didn't feel boxed in or constrained, but it was definitely a sense of location. I felt beings about me rather than saw them which comforted me and transmitted peaceful thoughts into my consciousness. Talking without speaking seemed entirely normal to me in this universe, as if I'd always done it but was only now remembering how. Some have described my experience as a life review. It wasn't like in a movie when I was outside of it. 
it was completely immersive and engaging. I was able to recognize both the good and negative things I had done. I say both positive and terrible. It seemed more like these beings wanted to show me the road in life that I had chosen and how my actions or words had either aided or hindered me in getting there. This review was written from the perspective of people who had been impacted by my comments or actions, rather than from my own. I observed how I influenced how people felt or thought about me as if I were them. I sensed the presence of other souls around, people who, like me, had recently died and were now in this new reality. I know we talked, but I couldn't tell you what we talked about. Conversation occurs naturally and without verbalization in this setting. And because everything seemed to happen at the speed of thinking, it's impossible to put every concept into words because it's like attempting to catch a cloud with your hands. Several of us went on a sort of excursion together. We flew through space and the universe at incredible speeds. We were not bound by physical laws or any other restrictions. When we had an idea, we were there right away. There was no sensation of time passing for me. The trip into space was, in a word, liberating. I felt adrenaline, joy, amazement, and astonishment, like a child who had just gotten to visit all of his favorite locations in the world at the same time. I didn't want it to end. The colors were considerably more vibrant, merging together like Van Gogh's Starry Night. Sounds and music were combined together with colors. Every star we saw had a different frequency or vibration. The brighter the star, the higher the tone, and the darker the star, the lower the tone. Globular clusters and groups of young stars sounded like a choir of stars. It was the most incredible spectacle I'd ever witnessed. I felt connected to everything at the same time. There was no sense of separation, no dividing line between here and there, between myself and other entities. Their astonishment was mine, and mine was theirs. Unfortunately, the journey was cut short. I was alone once more, yet I could feel the comfort and overwhelming affection of those all around me. All-encompassing, unconditional love was what everything was made of, came from, and returned to. It engulfed me like a warm blanket on a cold day, and all I wanted to do was stay within that love for the rest of my life. While there were numerous voices speaking to me throughout the experience, one in particular appeared to stick out. I believe it was a male voice. This voice informed me that I needed to return. I felt cold and alone after hearing that. While supporting this central voice, the other voices strove to console me even more. They said I'd remember this event and that simply thinking about it would bring it all back to me. They also told me that one day, my day would come and that it would be over in the blink of an eye. I didn't want to leave, but the longer I stayed, the heavier I felt, as if I were submerged and being dragged down by an anchor. I could feel my body somewhere else, but it was foreign to me. I couldn't imagine ever being so restricted again. I awoke in the emergency room the next thing I knew. When I became unconscious, I felt agony from my head injuries and from falling, but it was strange to me. I felt the anguish, but in a distant way, as if it were happening to someone else, but I was experiencing it alongside them. Nothing felt genuine to me, and I was lost and puzzled. I initially did not respond to the doctor because I was split between what I had just witnessed and this physical universe. In terms of what I did after my first NDE, I have no recollection of it. All of the information I have comes from people who were present. Due to repeated head traumas and dying twice, my memory for events before the age of 12 is hazy at best. I feel more at home in other realms than in this one. My relatives told me that the difference between me before and after my first NDE was that my IQ dropped slightly, seemingly overnight. I had previously been in a gifted class and had a zeal for life, exploration, and a natural interest about everything around me. However, following that, I was drowsy, had little interest in school, and slept a lot more. Between the continual taunting, my declining grades in school, and the realization that I was not where I wanted to be, I slipped into a deep melancholy that lasted for years. I considered suicide on a regular basis because my existence here seemed to be all about misery and suffering, and I knew there had to be a better place that I was now separated from. My depression worsened when I was 16, not long after my family relocated from Massachusetts to North Carolina. 
I'd been thinking about terminating my life for months. I had evaluated and rejected dozens of situations because they were either beyond my power to make happen, would endanger other people's lives, or would do harm. After years of agony, the last thing I wanted in the end was more of it. I decided on tablets. If you consume enough of anything, you will very likely perish, and it would be completely painless. But one night, after a furious confrontation with my mother, I let all of my fury and rage out, and I told her everything. It was more appropriate to say I spat it at her. She had the foresight to recognize that I was in a poor situation and that I required assistance. After being admitted to a local hospital's inpatient ward, I would spend the next four months receiving treatment, followed by another two and a half months of outpatient therapy in a controlled atmosphere. My parents always thought the doctor would save me or that the therapy would help, but it didn't. But something did happen. Time. I felt continual pressure in the world to be everything to everyone, to do well in school, to do my chores, to blend in, to engage in activities, and so on. But all of this stress left me with no time to cope with the despair that was eating me from the inside out. As a result, I rarely saw the doctor in the hospital. To be honest, he was the worst employee I'd ever seen, before or since. But I had some alone time to confront my issues and determine whether I wanted to quit this world or fight for myself. I discovered a power I never thought I possessed. And I discovered that my demons could only beat me if I let them. I emerged with a sharper mind, a stronger connection to the world around me, and a strong sense of justice and morality that has only grown stronger in the years following. After my best friend was killed by a drunk driver, I became an activist and champion, first against drunk driving and then against bullying because of my own experiences with it. I have championed many social and political concerns and causes throughout my life, and I continue to do so today. But I also left with a renewed sense of wonder, particularly about the world, our interconnectedness and NDEs. I've read and watched dozens of NDE reports, such as Miracles from Heaven. Heaven is for real, my stroke of insight, map of heaven, and others. So my experience was definitely more metaphysical and I finally realized that I wasn't alone in that. The more I researched, the more I learned that NDEs are as diverse as the people who have them, and I believe I understand why. As I previously stated, I felt an overwhelming sense of love and acceptance as well as a complete lack of fear. I was designed to feel entirely at ease and at home making the transition between the physical world and this other dimension easier for me to understand and accept. That is something that happens to all of us. What makes one person feel at ease and accepted may feel oppressive and suffocating to another. So each of us is given a situation that corresponds to our attitude, a scenario that makes sense to us, does not alarm us, and puts our minds at ease. My life is so different now, so different from what it was before these two incidents. Yes, I had some say in it, but I know that these experiences, more than any of my choices, have shaped the person I've become. In fact, I'm convinced that without their influence, many of my decisions would not have been made. These days, I'm passionate about several subjects, including activism, photography, reading, writing, astronomy, and so on. But one of my passions, really an obsession, was primarily kept hidden for a long time. Because no one I know had had an NDE, I felt like a freak. My experience differed from those I'd heard about for so long, and I felt lonely because I was hesitant to share mine. But I'm no longer terrified. I don't fear death, so why should I be afraid of discussing this? So I began sharing my experiences on Facebook, initially with close, like-minded pals, then with a larger audience. I want others to know they're not alone and that there's no such thing as a negative experience. Most importantly, I want others to see that there's nothing to be afraid of. I also want individuals who haven't had one of those experiences to understand that a lot of what motivates them is a fear of the unknown. They have no idea what happens beyond death, thus they're terrified of it. But one thing that all individuals I've read about or spoken to who've had NDEs have in common is that they no longer fear death. That is not an accident. Why should we be terrified of our origins or our destination? 
Our life on Earth, however long or short, is a mere blink of an eye in comparison to the rest of existence. You will not live forever, whether you're a dedicated religious person, a once in a blue moon attendance, a non-religious person, or an atheist. Whether they're prepared or not, everyone must face that final moment.